All right, thought you might have a lot more 3D options by now. Well, our next guest admits we might have known that 3D TVs and discs would not be commonplace quite yet. On the phone with me this morning is Chris Chinock. He's president of Insight Media. It's a research firm that focuses on new on-screen technology. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Cal. How are you? I'm doing well. 3D, though, seems like it's not doing so well. I mean, what's happening? I mean, after Avatar, I think we all thought, man, this is going to take off big time, and yet it really hasn't. Well, I think you need to keep um, the the whole um, 3D revolution, if you want to call it a revolution, uh, in perspective. The 2010 has been kind of the introductory year. There have been some ups and some downs. Um, but it's you're going to see a whole lot of waves of innovation and, and technology and content. So this is just the first wave. There'll be a lot more to come. You know, looking through my notes, you write about some specific uh, things that are kind of holding it back. You talk about authoring, subtitles, captions, compatibility. Talk to us a little bit about these issues. Well, um, creating content, of course, is, is the key to opening up the 3D TV market. Uh, it's been slow developing in 2010. Uh, partly because there's been a, a reluctance of the studios to release it until there's enough 3D TVs. That's, that's a business decision. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, there's been um, creative um, uh, factors that have kind of held back the release of uh, 3D Blu-ray discs. Um, the authoring process is much, much more complex than it would be for a 2D movie. Uh, and you have to test compatibility with all these th uh, 2D and 3D Blu-ray players. So learning the, the, to, to author these, to get those tools in place, to get the training in place, right. taking time. And I'm thinking about 3D glasses. I mean, if you're going to get a 3D TV at home, you still have to have 3D glasses. Are they going to ever overcome that, or that's just going to be the way it works? Uh, they will overcome that. Uh, and that's why I, I look at this as a series of waves of, of technology. Uh, the current wave are these active shutter glass uh, TVs that are out there today and will continue to be out there. Uh, at CES, we're going to see a bunch of brands, uh, the Consumer Electronics Show, which is in January, uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, actually one week, uh, we'll see in the next wave of uh, passive polarized uh, 3D TVs. Those are the same glasses that you wear in the cinemas today. And then uh, beyond that, mm -hmm. in three to five years, will be no glasses TV. All right, so we've got to be a little patient here. So. If you had to make a bet, Chris, I mean, how long before um, 3D is kind of commonplace when you go to the movie theaters, you've got 3D TVs in a lot of American homes, that it's really affordable and it's kind of all over the place? Are you talking five years, ten years? How long? Well, uh, I, again, it kind of depends on, on the, which technology you're talking about. But I think, uh, in general, um, the trend is in place. The, con the TV manufacturers are motivated to build in 3D uh, capabilities into their TVs. It, the cost of doing that is going to diminish uh, very quickly. So in reality, you'll probably, in, in, in certainly in two or three years, you'll be buying a TV that has the 3D capability built in, kind of whether you want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happens. Hey, Chris, we're going to leave it there. Hey, thank you so much. Chris Chinock of Insight Media joining us on the phone.